Hey, I'm John, and I'm here on the couch with my electric eel wheel Nano. If you haven't met the Nano yet, this is the newest electric spinning wheel from Dreaming Robots. Uh, it was part of a Kickstarter campaign. Uh, I've had mine for about a week. I'm totally in love with it. Um, I'll just, you can see it fits in the palm of your hand. Weighs less than a half a pound. I think it's 7.7 .7 ounces with the bobbin on. It's like 219 grams. Uh, runs off of an AC power cord, or you can also run it off of a 5-volt USB charger, like a phone charger or a little power bank, like the lipstick chargers even, will run it for several hours. Uh, you just need a USB cable that'll bump it up to 9 volts, but those are available from uh, the Electric Eel Wheel site also. You can find them on the Amazon. Um, but, uh, but again, it's just it's a super portable, fully functional spinning wheel. It's not going to do everything your um, $1,000 Hanson Mini Spinner is going to do, but it will spin anything from lace weight to, you know, probably an Aran weight or a bulky weight yarn. Probably not going to handle art yarns very well, and it's probably going to, and, and bulky yarns aren't going to be its strong suit. I think it's really more suited to thinner yarns, but it will spin a worsted weight yarn easily. Um, and I, you know, I don't think that would be a trouble for it. Uh, I haven't done that yet, um, but I've got mine going. I've had it for about a week. Um, I'm, I'm spinning yarn, having fun with it. Um, one of the things I noticed on the Ravelry and uh, Facebook user groups, though, is that a lot of newer users are having, and that's not necessarily new spinners, but new to the Nano, are having trouble getting started, and that's getting it to... to wind on the leader uh, and actually start taking up yarn. And that might be an issue with tension uh, on the brake band or it could be the leader selection, it could be in a number of things. So I thought I'd do a quick video and just kind of run through getting started. We'll talk about the thread hooks. Uh, um, the, we'll talk about, oh, that's a slide hook, sorry. We'll talk about the slide hooks, the flyer arms, um, choosing a leader and threading it. Uh, and adjusting tension for take up. And hopefully, if you're struggling to get started with the Nano, I'll answer some of your questions. Um, but if I don't, uh, again, the the user groups, the user community on Ravelry and on Facebook are both super active, super supportive. Um, there's people offering suggestions and tips and tricks like mine, um, hacks, uh, little improvements that people are making, like uh, you'll see my brake band here uh, is an example. Um, well, uh, ideas for carrying cases and transporting it, um, all kinds of things. So if you haven't already been on Ravelry, if you're if you're if you're haven't been on the groups yet in Ravelry and Facebook, I really recommend that you join them. They're they're um, great user groups, full of people like myself that love the Nano and want you to love it too. So. Hopefully you'll get some use from this video. If you don't, feel free to leave comments on the video, questions questions in the comments, or you can also find me on Ravelry and Facebook. So I'll turn my camera around and get the wheel set up and we'll get started. All right, let's talk about spinning. Um, a couple things to point out. I've got these little suction cup feet on my wheel. Uh, so you'll see me kind of move my wheel every once in a while to lift it up off the table and lock it back into place. That's because I'm using these suction cup feet uh, that someone suggested on Ravelry or Facebook. Uh, the, the, the Nano has little screw holes in the base where you can, um, you know, some people are screwing them to little uh, cutting boards. Some people are using nonstick mats under them to keep them from sliding around. Uh, these suction cups work great for me because we've got a glass coffee table that I like to sit at and spin at home. Uh, and my local coffee shop has a really slick countertop um, that those suction cups stick to really nicely. Uh, even if it's on a surface though, like some wood surfaces don't stick as well, especially if there's a little bit of grain. But those suction cups still give me enough traction that, you know, I'm not going to pull this off the table while I'm drafting. And I don't, you know, I don't have to worry it's sliding around too much. Uh, but if it's a nice slick surface, those work great to hold it down. So 
and then you also notice I'm powering my Nano off of this battery pack. Uh, this is just a, you know a, a power bank for phone charging a phone. I'm actually charging my phone right now at the same time that I'm going to be running my wheel. Um, and actually, if you've got a power bank that has two USB ports, that's a great solution. Uh, to keep this from turning off a lot of power banks will power down if there's no current drawn for 30 seconds or so so then if it turns off you have to either you know maybe it might have a switch or a little button on it that'll reset it you may have to unplug it but if you plug something into it like your phone uh, or a little you can buy a little usb light that plugs into those as well that's kind of constantly drawing current that'll keep that from turning off uh, if you're using like a lipstick charger that only has one port, then that's obviously that's not going to work. But if you've got two ports available in your charger, that's a great solution. I've also got this cool USB uh, switch, inline switch. So it plugs into my phone charger and then my USB cable for the Nano plugs into the other end of it. Uh, and now that's a great solution for turning the wheel on and off. Um, it, I like it better than, you know, trying to reach for the SZ switch to turn it off. That's a pretty tight squeeze to get in there, uh, especially when that's stuck to the table. Um, uh, using the, the speed switch is also an option, of course, and that's kind of the, the standard that people are using when they first take this thing out of the box. Uh, but for me, when I'm trying to be consistent... Uh, and I set that speed switch where it gives me the, the amount of twist that I want for the rate that I'm drafting. I don't want to keep moving that speed switch because that's going to make it harder to stay consistent. So having this switch to turn on and off helps me maintain uh, a more consistent amount of twist um, for the rate that I'm drafting at. So highly recommend it. You can also buy these for the foot switch uh, for the for the AC power cord um, so they're not USB uh, but I just got these on Amazon and it came in a pack of two for uh, it was under ten dollars I think it was six dollars for two all right let's talk about flyer hooks or slide hooks uh, of course that's the hooks on your flyer arm here that act as a guide for your yarn to get from your orifice to the bobbin when I started thinking about what I wanted to talk about on these videos, I was surprised at how much there was to say about these hooks. Um, and there is there are a lot of questions on the forums um, about the hooks and suggestions for using them, modifying them, etc. So we'll talk about some of those. Uh, when you get your, your Nano, uh, when you first take it out of the box, these hooks are apt to be anywhere on this flyer arm. So... One of the first things you want to do is is move this closest hook so that it's past the end of the bobbin here, uh, and then that's that's actually going to be a stationary hook. So once you've got it set, its its function really is just to redirect this to the orifice. Uh, so once you've got it set back here so that you know it's not interfering with your bobbin, uh, and and you've got room to move this hook uh, up and down to fill your bobbin. Uh, so you just want to get it, make sure it's out of the way, and then it's directing you onto the bobbin. Once you set it there, you can pretty much leave it there. There's not um, many occasions uh, where you would need to move that. Unless you're doing something like cross-threading your flyer, you may want to move one of them up. Uh, but that's that's a, a, a you know not a, a super common technique uh, for spinning very thin yarn if you're having trouble controlling tension and take up. Um, uh, but for the most part, like I said, these are just going to be stationary. Now, also, when you when your Nano is new, uh, if you feel these little wire tips, so the, the cut end of this wire, uh, if you rub your finger across these, you'll feel a little, a little burr. So that's just from where they clip that wire, it leaves a little sharp tip uh, that kind of sticks out and you can feel it kind of if you drag your finger across it, it kind of grabs at your finger um, so if you feel those burrs uh, and you can use like a little round or a little metal file um, I've got a pair of 
you know, fingernail clippers that have this little file on them. That'll get in there and smooth that off. Um, I have for my Dremel tool, my Roto tool, I have uh, a little conical sanding burr. And that's what I use. That worked really well to, to let me get uh, all around the edge of this, this uh, wire tip and smooth off those burrs. So on this side, if I feel this side, there's that it doesn't catch my finger at all because I already did these ones. I haven't done this side yet, so I can feel little burrs on these. Uh, so I'll come back and take care of those later. Um, what else? Uh, there's a lot of questions about why are there two loops on here. I think that's probably a manufacturing thing as much as it is a use thing. If you've got this symmetrical hook, it doesn't matter what direction that goes on or which which way these arms go on. Uh, no matter which way you put them on, they're they're going to be in the same position basically. So that gains that helps helps with some manufacturing efficiencies or assembly efficiencies, I assume. So it's probably a cost factor there. Uh, and then also they do serve a function, and we'll talk about uh, um, uh, using those loops to move the hooks. And when I first when I first saw these, I thought, okay, well I just need to pinch them. If you pinch these together, then they should move. But you'll but you'll notice when you if you if you pinch them it turns and it kind of locks it in place so it doesn't you know you can move it if you try or if you kind of fiddle with it but it's not super easy and I thought well maybe if I instead of pinching this direction I'll pinch this way up and down so and that does work if you pinch it you know you can you can kind of rock it so it's not locking and it slides really easily. But look at my thumb, right? Now I have a little dent in my thumb and in my finger. Uh, it takes quite a bit of pressure to squeeze that and control which way that's turning so that I can move it smoothly. So, and that's a little more <laughs> work. That's a little more work than you need to do to move that wire. Uh, and then I thought, well, you know, if I just grab this bottom corner, that moves pretty easily, actually. So. Uh, so I kind of settled on that for a while, and that's how I was moving that uh, that hook. Um, but as I continued to think about it, I kind of went to my um, Hands and Crafts mini spinner. So this is the this is the flyer from a Hands and Crafts mini spinner. You can see it's only got one yarn guide loop, but on the bottom of this, it has two metal loops. And when you buy a mini spinner, it the directions tell you don't squeeze these together to move, just push it in the direction that you need it to go. All right? So so you're not gonna pinch, you're just gonna push one of those loops. So I thought, well, maybe that'll work on the nano, and surprisingly it does. There's a there's a trick though. When you when you push on this loop, if you push the outside edge of it, let's zoom in a little. If you push on the outside edge of it, that that will twist that loop and and tends to lock it in place also, especially depending on which way you're kind of pushing the force. Like this direction, it actually does slide a little bit. Uh, this, if I do it this direction, it locks it in place. Um, same with this one. Right, one of them that doesn't move. If I do it that way, that does. Ah, see, that slides a little bit. So it's kind of finicky. What I found was that if you kind of Aim for the, that cut point, that end of that wire. That end of that wire is is pretty much centered on this ridge on the flyer arm. All right. So if you see that end, how it's kind of centered over this edge. So it's pretty it's pretty center. Um, and if you you know you can even slide your finger, or set your finger on this edge and slide it. Kind of aim for that end of that wire. And just push and it slides really easily and I can do it you know I'll do it the same with this way I'm just aiming my thumb for the end of that wire and pushing and I do I like to stabilize it you know I'll put my thumb on this end of the flyer arm if I'm going this direction or my finger over here if I'm going this direction uh, and you don't have to get exact right you don't have to like focus all of your uh, pressure right there on the tip your the pad of your finger sort of will naturally land on this loop 
but you know if you kind of if that's your intent is to hit that end of that wire that's pretty much all you need to do right and it moves really easily so super simple way to move the hook and it and uh, makes ma makes those adjustments um, really quick and easy uh, so you'll you'll notice on on my stationary hooks I've only got one loop and that's because I clipped one of these off um, and I did that before I figured out that I needed this hook or this loop to move that easily so what what I what I this is while I was still using this bottom edge to move these I got to the end of my bobbin uh, and I'm and in order to get and fill the end of my bobbin, I move this hook out as far as I could get it. So now it's far enough out that I can move, you know, that it's gonna fill the end of my bobbin. But if you look at it, right, it catches on my brake band. Can you see that? Right, because that loop sticks out too far. The out, this, this back loop is, is too far out. So it's snagging my brake band. So, so I thought, well, how am I going to fill the end of that bobbin? So I thought, well, I'm not using that, right? That really on this arm serves no purpose because here's the one I'm threading. Uh, I'm just moving, I'm moving it like this, oops, with these corners. I never really touched that. I don't really need it. So I cut it off. And then somebody, and I shared that on Facebook, and then somebody said, you know, why don't you just thread it on the left arm? So on the left arm, the 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 hook that's closest to the bobbin is this back hook uh, so if you if you thread it through there you can get right up to the end of that bobbin uh, and and the hook doesn't extend past the end of the arm right so it's not going to fear with your brake band uh, and you can fill that bobbin right to the end so and it's just a simple you know it's a simple matter of if you're when you're when your bobbin is is threaded of you know taking it out of this loop I'm gonna say it's a simple le lesson and then it's not gonna happen simply <laughs> uh, but but it should be simpler than this right that's the one I haven't sanded down um, but it's you know it's a simple matter of unhooking it from that loop flipping it over to this side and 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 back into this. So when you're when you're filling your bobbin, that's that's the easiest way. It doesn't require any modification to your hooks. Um, you just it's just a matter of flipping it over, and then you can leave it on this side if you want, and, and use this one to fill your bobbin back this way, or you can just as soon as you start moving back this direction to fill your bobbin, you can flip it back over to the right arm if that's your preference, uh, and it, and it's you know that way you don't have to change anything about your hooks. Um, this brings up another point where you'll see uh, a lot of people will are saying on the Facebook post you'll see people say well this the the right the right arm is for Z twist adding Z twist or spinning clockwise and the left arm you should use the left arm when you're uh, adding S twist or spinning counterclockwise um, that's uh, again that's a matter of, of complete preference it's just a preference matter there's no um practical reason that you can't use the right arm for adding s and z twist or the left arm for adding s s and z twist use whichever you're more comfortable with there's this it's not designed to be specific for the direction that you're applying um it's designed to be uh um what's the word um <laughs> uh, well, we'll come back to it. It's des designed to give you options, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. So use whichever you're more comfortable with. I like using the right arm because I'm right-handed, uh, so it's just more natural for me when I'm spinning to reach out with my right hand. I can, I can, you know, I'm, I'm not hiding the thing with my arm trying to reach to this side. Uh, it's just easier to see. It's more natural for me to spin on my right arm. So I use my right arm for spinning at my right flyer arm for spinning and plying. And the only time I flip it over to my left arm now is on the nano when I want to reach that the end of that bobbin. So if I'm spinning on my on my mini spinner on my uh, on my um, 
shacked. Uh, I'll, I'll spin and ply on the same arm, on the same side of the firearm. Uh, there's, there's, there's really no reason why you must switch one to the other. It's, it's personal preference. So, um, we'll talk about threading the flyers. And this, this was, somebody asked, a couple of people I've seen have asked for more uh, information or photos, directions on how to thread these loops. Uh, and initially I thought, well, that's kind of, you know, I didn't understand why people are having trouble with that because it's really, you know, I just, it's pretty counter, or pretty intuitive, right? You just, you just go under the loop, under the loop, then go up over the end of that wire, go under the loop, up over the end of that wire, then go to your orifice. So I was like, why, you know, I don't understand why people are having trouble with that until I tried to uh, thread the left side. So, so I did basically the same thing. I just went under the loop and then up over the wire, but that now that's twisted around, right? Right? Um, right? See, that's not right. And if it sits right, then it actually sits on the base of that loop and not inside it like I want it to be. So how did I do that, right? I just did it the same way, under and over. Nope, that's not working, right? For some reason, it took me a few minutes to figure out what I was doing wrong. Uh, and so if here's just kind of an easy way to remember if you're if you're you know finding that you have to kind of fiddle with that to get it threaded the right way if you if you lay your leader perpendicular or parallel sorry parallel to your flyer arm going in the direction that it's normally going to travel right so this is the loose end that's going to go to my orifice so I want to point it at my orifice right uh, I don't want to go this way right the yarn's going to go this way so Lay your, lay your yarn parallel to your flyer arm, and then go under that loop and up over the end of it. Same here. Under that loop, up over the end of it, and there. Now it's properly threaded. All right? So it's really simple, uh, but for some reason on the left side, it just threw me off. Uh, so And that, that rule of thumb or that little, you know, kind of, uh, helpful hint works on this side as well, right? Lay up the direction that your that your um, yarn is going to go to the uh, yarn is going to travel, and then go up over the, under the loop and over the end of the loop, under the loop over the end, and that's threaded properly. So if you're if you're struggling to figure that out, that's uh, a little helpful um, technique there. Just hold your hold your uh, yarn parallel to that arm instead of perpendicular uh, and it just seems to go uh, more makes more sense uh, when, you, when you're trying to thread it just the way you naturally want to do it so uh, let's see we've talked about that flyer arm we've talked about threading the flyer uh, so I think that's it on hooks um, let's talk about flyer arms Another thing that you'll see people say over and over on the forum is that you need to turn this flyer arm 90 degrees. And what they're telling you to do is, when you get your Nano, when, when it comes assembled, you can see that, the, that this is a triangular shaped arm. This arm is shaped like a triangle. And the point, it's kind of rounded on the bottom edges and the top is a point, sharp point. And that sharp point, is pointing straight up so it's pointing that direction let's get something a little thinner so that's the way that point is 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 going so what what they want you to do when they say rotate that flyer arm is to take a screwdriver and this screw in the end of the flyer arm and rotate turn it so that arm rotates 90 degrees so the point sits this direction so if, if this is my right arm, this is the way I'm spinning, uh, they say take this and rotate it 90 degrees. And that makes your loops sit up on top of this arm instead of kind of out to the side. And if we look at, so if we're gonna put this back, we'll just put this back. 
to uh, how it comes. And the reason that, that people are suggesting that, or in some cases telling you that that's what you need to do, <laughs> is because when you thread, when, when that's in its original position or its, or its um, standard position, if you when you thread your flyer, if you look at the arm, you'll see that this that that yarn is running right across the top of that plastic arm, uh, and you can see it down at this end too, right? It's not it's not a huge bend, right? But it is contacting that surface, right? So the common thinking is uh, that any friction you're adding by having the yarn run over another surface. Uh, that it doesn't need to touch is is adding it's adding friction and increasing the amount of tension that you need on your brake band to overcome that friction and get the yarn to wind on so the 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 you know so addition so friction is bad when you're trying to reduce the amount of tension needed to wind on your bobbin so uh, the thinking of course is that when that yarn's running over the edge of those, it's just adding more friction. Uh, but if you if you look at, at the, the flyer when it's threaded, right? As it goes through the hooks and through the orifice, uh, you can see that there's already a lot of friction, right? It's going, it's doing a 90 degree turn here. It's doing a 90 degree turn here almost. And then actually to get into this hole and out this one, it takes two more turns. So your yarn is already taking four turns just to get to your bobbin. The amount of friction that you're adding to run over this, this is very smooth plastic. Uh, that's not adding an appreciable amount of friction as it runs over there. So, um, so you can adjust your arm if you want, but really it's probably not at all necessary. Uh, and, and in fact, on this end, where you're winding onto your bobbin, you can see that as soon as I start to wind on, that actually lifts away. And, the, and as you add onto your bobbin and the core of your bobbin grows, that gets further and further away from that arm. So it's only gonna be touching initially. Now this one will continue to rub uh, if, if it's, if you notice that, it, that may continue to rub, but I really don't think that's adding a significant amount of friction um, or enough that you need to worry about it. That being said, if you don't want it to touch, uh, you can rotate it. Now, you don't need to rotate it 90 degrees. You're, you can. There's no reason not to. Um, but you really only, you know, if you rotate it about 10 degrees, then, then that lifts it off there. Um, and then you can do the same for this arm too if you want. All right, rotate it about 90 degrees. But honestly, you really don't need to. Um, another thing about rotating arms, uh, some users will tell you on the right arm, the hook should point up, and on the left arm, you should rotate it the opposite direction, so they go down. Uh, somebody said that that was the only right answer and that that was a, an industry standard. Well, I don't, you know, there's, if you look at Again, look at the Hanson Craft Mini Spinner again. Um, those it it has these stationary guides are both on the same side, so they're 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 both on the right side or on the top side as well, not on the opposite side. Um, a lot of spinning wheels do have uh, the hooks on opposite sides, um, but there's also a number of wheels that don't. Uh, that the new Ashford E Spinner Three has uh, has. The, the stationary hooks on the same side. Um, I think Lendrum wheels also maybe have um, have them on the same side. Some wheels only have a, a hook on one side, so you only use one arm. Um, older wheels, some, especially a lot of older wheels, you'll see a row of hooks on one arm and nothing on the other. Uh, but then there's also you know an equal or more more that will will have them on opposite sides. So it's kind of again personal preference. Uh, if, if you think about the Nano, though, and we talked about how moving, um, filling the end of the bobbin, you want to flip over to the left, the left hook. Uh, if you point that hook down, that's, 
that you you lose that functionality so for me it makes more sense um, especially on the nano to point those loops uh, in the same direction so I, I do them you know both to the top so but if you prefer to have them facing in opposite directions uh, completely up to you so I think that covers the arms and that covers the hooks so let's talk about um, leader material choosing a leader material and uh, getting started spinning um, I've got three different kinds of leader material uh, that we can talk about this this first one is uh, this is Patton's classic wool um, it's a worsted weight wool uh, and it's like 100 grams is 230 yards I think 223 yards I think it is actually so it's 100% wool uh, and it's a worsted weight I my personal preference if I'm spinning wool especially I like to use wool for my leader um, some people like cotton fur leaders uh, um, but I, 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 I prefer wool especially if I'm spinning with wool I just think it's a little more grabby um, but use whatever works for you uh, and, and whatever you have in your stash um, this is this orange yarn is Cascade 220 Superwash. That's also a worsted weight yarn. Uh, of course, it's 220 grams versus or 220 yards instead of 223. But if you so it's but about the same weight as the as the patents. But if you look at the two of them, uh, look how much thicker the patents looks uh, than than the Cascade. All right, it's a looser. Uh, it, has, it has less twists per inch. The patents is about eight or eight and a half uh, twists per inch, uh, where the Cascade is is um, closer to ten or eleven, I think. So th this one looks a little smoother. The Cascade is a little fuzzier. Uh, sorry, the patents is a little fuzzier. It looks a little looser. Um, so it actually might be, and, and this yellow yarn that I have on my Nano, this is the Patton's also, this Patton's Classic Wool. So it's the same as this dark green yarn. But I wanted to use a dark green yarn where we're talking about tying on just because it's a little bit easier to see. And the yellow shows up much nicer against this black arm. So, um, but, but these are both, but you can see how much, how fuzzy this is uh, and how um, uh, it's a little bit heavier. Uh, so this may not be, the best choice for a leader, particularly with these grabby uh, tips on your hooks. Um, my personal preference is sock yarn, so this is what I'll use. And I tend to spin yarn that's thinner, my single thinner singles. Um, so uh, having a little thinner leader doesn't uh, is works fine for me. Um, and this this might be a great uh, a great. Um, choice for the Nano as well, just based on the size of these hooks and their tendency to grab hairier yarn. So this is a, I think that's a drops um, sock yarn. Um, but for the purpose of the demonstration, we're going to use this Patton's Classic Wool. Uh, tying on your leader, um, there's there's different ways, people, lots of different methods to do it. So you hear lots of suggestions. Uh, one suggestion, and I think this is Maurice's getting started video, uh, suggests that you you know loop your loop your yarn around the bobbin core, pull the end of it through, and then draw that up tight, and then and then they say put a piece of scotch tape on there, or cellophane tape, right, and then that holds that leader in place so that it doesn't slip and slide when you when you start to wind on. Um, I don't use tape, just not, I don't want to mess with it. It's, it's, that's just, again, personal preference. If you use tape and it works for you, um, that's great. No reason to change. Um, but uh, another method uh, that people have suggested, somebody uh, suggested that since these are breakdown bobbins that come apart, uh, you can just remove one end, stick the end of your yarn there, and then put it back together and then that locks your end in there and I think this is a brilliant option actually I don't you know it holds it really securely that's not going anywhere uh, it's not really it's not going to damage your bobbin it doesn't the you know the clearances on this aren't aren't um, uh, tight enough that you that 
you have to worry about, you know, is it going to put things out around, or is there any reason? I can't think of any reason not to do it. Um, and actually, this is probably how I'll start doing mine on my breakaway bottom, especially on my Nano. Um, it might be, you know, if on, on a Hanson Craft Mini Sprinter where the, titans, the clearances are a little uh, tighter, it may not, that may not be an option. So I'll probably, on my other spinning wheels, continue to do, uh, you know, loop, loop it around the core. But for the Hanson Craft, I think this is a great option. So I, you know, I can't think of any reason not to do it. Um, but what I'm, I'm going to show you, and then the last option again is uh, to a, a double loop method. So it starts out the same as the um, method with scotch tape, right? You just fold your leader in half. And some people will tie this in as well so that it's a loop. I just leave that loose. Uh, so it's so I only have my, my loop at one end. Whoops. So I have my loop at one end. So you wrap that loop around your bobbin and pull the loose ends through it. This is the same way that if you're going to tape it. But instead of adding the tape to it, what you're going to do is take that end that's coming through the loop then and loop it back on itself. Can you see that? And then go around the bobbin again with your ends and come back through that loop. So now you've created two loops. So you've got a loop here going this direction and you've got a loop on this side going this direction. Right? So one loop's going this direction, one loop's going this direction. And now when you tighten those up, re either way that you pull, you're kind of pulling against one of those loops. So it, so where a single loop slides pretty easily unless you tape it, th this one is takes quite a bit of tension to move it. Like I can move it if I want, but that's far more tension uh, than, than I'm going to need to pull my yarn onto the leader. So, so it's it's secure enough that it should easily pull onto my bobbin without without issue. Um, and then, you know, you can slide that around too. If you're still having trouble with the yarn slipping on, this is pretty slick plastic. If you're still finding that it slips quite a bit, you can also take some sandpaper, some 150 or 220 grit sandpaper, and just scratch this up a little bit. You don't have to go crazy. Um, just you know, put some scratches on it to to give the, that yarn a little, you know, something to grab onto. Um, just scuff it up, basically, with sandpaper. Uh, but, it, but you know, if you do this two-wrap method or, or lock the leader in the end of the bobbin, that's pretty secure. Uh, right? So we'll go from there. So I'm going to use this. We're, we're Go back. To, um, so again, where I would typically use a thinner yarn for this, I'm gonna I'm gonna use the the, the patents wool. Um, just so we can see uh, kind of the effects that this heavier wool has on the tension that you need to wind on, and uh, a trick uh, for kind of overcoming a little bit of that. Um, resistance that you're going to get if you look at even when you you know if you if you look at if you pull on this you can see how how much it bounces back here it bounces back a little less here and even less here it's barely moving right so so you can see that you've got some resistance already as you go around each of these corners you're adding a little bit more and if I pull on this yarn I can feel that it takes a good amount of of pull to move it through those hooks and through the orifice, right? Um, now that's not more tension that the, than the Nano can overcome, but you need to add more tension on your brake band in order to overcome that resistance. So let's we'll just turn this on, uh, and I've I've got my brake band here. Uh, I, I just unhooked and I swapped out from my glass bead brake band just to show you that we can do it with the regular brake band I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of let it lay there and just pick like the lowest amount of tension right so this is almost no tension right that's very loose um, and I know from experience that that's probably not gonna draw on very well it's just that's just too loose right but we'll we'll turn it on and just kind of look at it I've set my speed there a little so 
and you see it's adding twist but if I as I as I let up pressure on here it's not going anywhere it's just all kind of building up twist in this end it's not drawing on to the bobbin you can see that there it hasn't uh, I'm gonna reverse this just to kind of take some of that twist out real quick oops there we go just for the sake of how uh, my demonstration here would move some of that twist um, I've got that back on uh, S again so that's not enough tension that's way too loose so we're gonna add just a touch right I'm gonna just just a little bit I barely added you know I added just a little bit of tension there so now it bounces back uh, when I when I push on it um, and that still may not be enough to move this through but let's see Oops. All right, something happened there <laughs> oh, my battery went off. Okay, there we go. So, there we go. So, that's, you can see that's still not enough. It's still grabbing there. So, it's still not pulling onto my bobbin. So, let's reverse that again. Uh, and let's increase the tension a little more. So, I'm going to put quite a bit of tension on there and we'll see if we can overcome that resistance yet so now you can see that's starting to wind on and it's not winding on really fast but it is it is winding on All right so let's show you that again All right so again I'm just I'm just kind of not pulling on it and you can see it's starting to wind on, right? I might even need a little more tension to get it to wind on smoothly. But probably once I get past my leader and actually start getting a single on there, that, that'll wind on a little bit easier. But did you notice also how much slower my wheel is spinning now when I get them enough tension to get that to wind on? So I've got to actually... If I want to spin faster, I'm going to have to boost that speed up a little more. I'm not going to touch that right now. I'm going to leave it where it's at. And I'm going to make this suggestion. If you're using a worsted weight yarn uh, uh, as your leader, one thing you can do to kind of reduce the amount of tension that you need to get it to wind on is clip one of these off. So just go back to your bobbin. You've already got it tied on. That's not going anywhere. Just go in and cut one of those. And we're gonna pull it out of there. Which one is it? It's that one. All right? So now we've got it tied on with the loops, uh, but we've reduced, we've cut this, this in half. So it's a much smaller yarn that's going in there and you can see it actually takes less tension to move that you can feel it when you move it how how uh, much easier it moves through there and and when we turn this on to turn that you'll see it pulls on really quickly um, but it's still not turning much faster right but we but now we don't need as much tension to get that to pull on so we can actually reduce this again to pretty light tension. So here's that no tension. I'm gonna go just a little bit more. Uh, and we'll turn it on, we'll see if that winds on. Yeah, that's winding on. And look how much faster it's spinning. So I've 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 got this at almost the lowest tension I can get it, uh, and it's winding on well, and it's turning at good speed. So if you're if you're using a worst to weight yarn for your leader my recommendation is that you just clip off one of those uh, and just do a single strand of yarn to act as your leader. Okay, we've got our leader tied on and we've got our tension adjusted, uh, kind of as low as we can get it and still get some draw in. So let's get some fiber and see if we can make some yarn. <clears throat> I mean, this, I've got this uh, I, I'm not 100% certain what this is, but I'm pretty sure it's BFL. Uh, it's got a pretty good staple length, um, and it's a nice soft 
fiber, uh, and I, th I think it's I think it's BFL, but I'm not totally sure. So keep in mind that once you start spinning, and you've got your fiber onto your leader, uh, you may still need to adjust this tension up a little bit. If you if you get your fiber attached and for some reason it stops pulling on and you're getting a lot of over twist. Uh, you can always go ahead and bump this up a little bit, uh, but just do it in small steps. Just do tiny increments uh, to get enough, enough to get you past it. And then uh, once you're once you're winding yarn down to the bobbin, you can always drop that down again uh, if it's if you find it's too high. So I'm going to drop my speed down a bit here uh, until we get um, until we get our leader on. Uh, and that's going to help me make sure I don't get too much twist and get little curly cues uh, in my fiber that are going to interfere with 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 my fiber drawing on so let's we're going to start that up and we'll just see if we can't get some you know, that's a little too slow we'll see if we can't get some yarn spun see you see how it's all so so it's not drawing on again right so that's what i said so let's, we're just going to bump this up a bit, not too much, and see if that, no, not yet. So what's happening here? Uh, let's do just a touch more. There we go. There we go. So now I've got, now I've got my leader feeding on. And, and and I'm not shoving it onto the bobbin. I'm letting it take the take the yarn uh, as I draw forward. So I guess I am I guess I am by the action of pulling forward, pushing it onto the bobbin. But I'm not forcing it on faster than uh, than it wants to draw it on. And you can see if you you know if I do some kind of backward draw. Well, the front I'll do some backward drafting and then let it draw on so um, so now we're making yarn let's see let's see if we can drop this tension down just a little bit again uh, because it does it's got some it is pulling so I'm gonna lower that a little bit and see if we can if we're still pulling on and that's pretty good, All right? So uh, I, I'm still winding on my bottom. It's a little stretchy there, and I'm going to speed things up just a bit. It's a little slower than I want to go. <clears throat> um, and if you want, you can try to lower that tension a little bit more, even. Um, but it's, I've got it pretty low where I'm at right now. So let's move our hook a little bit. Mm -hmm. There we go. Keep spinning. So I'm spinning kind of thin. I'm going to thicken things up here a little bit. We'll just talk about yarn thickness. So the thicker your yarn is, the, the, the less twist you need. Um, so if you're trying to spin a thicker single, you can slow down a little bit if you're finding it's getting over twisted. But see how I thick it up now, and it's not pulling on as quickly as it was. Uh, and that's uh, not a big difference, but I'm still getting drawn, so I'm not going to change anything right now. I'm just going to, that, that seems to be working all right. So let's stop that, and we'll just ply back and see what that looks like. That's not bad. Oh, a little under twisted there, but... So that's a nice loose ply. We might want a little bit more twist in it, but that's not too bad. Um, that's about 11, 11 twists per inch, so I don't know what that is. Uh, double knit weight maybe, or a um, light worsted. So. If you want a little more twist, you can speed up, or you can just slow down your plying a little bit, whichever you're more comfortable with. Move our, move our 
firearm. Let's look at our yarn. It's pretty nice. All right, again, we're <clears throat> still at about 11 twists per inch. Um, and that's for a two ply. Uh, if you want, you know, if you want a heavier yarn, you can spin three plies too. And we'll see what that looks. So that's a three ply long yarn now, and that's it's about nine twists per inch. So, you know, we're talking about worsted weight or Aran weight yarn. Uh, so the so the nano is certainly capable of of handling that that way the yarn. Um, like I said, I do think it excels at a finer gauge yarn, and and we'll just do we're gonna thin things out here a little bit and see what this looks like. So for a thinner gauge yarn, you want a little more twist to keep the yarn together. So speed the things up a little bit there. And this is a pretty long staple length. And and I you know I think I could confidently go even thinner than that if I wanted to. And we're probably spinning a two-ply lace weight easily here. Let's see what it looks like. So that's a nice loose ply. Uh, and that's... That's 20 TPI. Uh, uh, 20, 21 maybe, 22, so pretty good. Or not TPA, wrap sprinch, I'm sorry. So, but you can see it gets really thin. I'm gonna spin that up a little more just for the thinness of the one. So I think that's a pretty nice lace weight yarn. It's really nice, and that's uh, that's about 30, 30 wraps per inch. So that's pretty impressive. Uh, <clears throat> and and the nano handles it really well. So and and of course, if you if you like spinning thin, but you need a a heavier weight yarn. Of course, you can just add, you know, add plies to it. Ply, you can you can do a three ply. You can uh, ply your yarn and then um, and then ply two of your double ply two plies together for a cabled yarn, a cabled four ply yarn. Um, so, like I said, the Nano is really capable of a, of, a, of a range of yarns. Um, uh, but uh, like I said, I think it loves to. To spin thin, or maybe it's just me that loves to spin thin. Um, one other thing I wanted to talk about before I close out these videos <clears throat> is that um, I've, I've read uh, a few times on the forum um, people saying, you know, use a short forward draw. That the that you know with the nano you really need to use a short forward draw. And and again, that's I it's you the the nano is totally capable of doing. Um, a long draw 
right, uh, supported or not. And this isn't the best fiber for a long draw, probably. But I just wanted to point out that it's not, you know, you're not limited to a short forward draw just because it's the Nano, right? Um, you know, if you want to do a supported long draw or unsupported long draw even, uh, you, you can certainly set up the wheel to do it. So, there you go. That's the Nano. Um, I hope my videos have been been useful uh, or have um, answered some questions. Um, if you if you disagree, if you have comments or more questions, again, feel free to leave them for me in the comments or find me on Ravelry as He Knits. Uh, and I'm also active in the Facebook group. Um, so uh, thank you for hanging in there with me. I think I said this was going to be a quick video, and it's and it's longer than I anticipated. But um, I again, I hope you find it useful, and I appreciate your spending time with me. Have a great day, and please enjoy your nano.